Hello, it's Mrs. Rowe, and I am here to read you this book called The Scraps Book, Notes from a Colorful Life by Lois Elhart, who's an author and illustrator. And this is just the back page and the front and back. It says good stuff, all pictures from her life. Lois Elhart. The Scraps Book. And it says, Don't read this book unless you love books and art. So I hope you do. When I was little, I read all the books on the library shelf, and I thought, maybe someday I could make a book. And it says, this is me in my grandmother's garden. So there's a photo of her when she was little. I was lucky. I grew up with parents who made things with their hands. And it says, my mom and dad were turning home after hunting for wild asparagus. Art from eating the alphabet. I wonder if you read that book. And it says, this is the home where I grew up. Mom loved to sew. She had colorful fabric, scraps, buttons, lace, ribbons, and many scissors she shared with me. I use my mom's pinking shears on my art projects, these ones. And it says, Dad had a basement workshop. He gave me wood scraps and taught me how to paint and saw and pound nails. So I had a wonderful art supplies and tools to create at hand. And it says dad's brush and my watercolor brush. In a small corner of our house, dad set up a folding table for me. It was my spot, a place to work and dream. When I grew up and left home for art school, my table went with me. And it says, this is my spot now. Look how filled with color and materials. And this is a photo of the table. Looks like she's got a lot of projects done on that one. After art school, I worked in an art studio by day and I worked on book ideas at night. I created lots of art, though not for books right away, but I didn't worry. Everyone needs to time to develop their dreams. An egg in the nest doesn't become a bird overnight. Where do book ideas come from anyway? I know I find ideas in the world around me, and it said, this fruit and vegetable face was the first cover idea for eating the alphabet. I even found them in my garden or while shopping at the fruit and vegetable store. And so these are some, this is the first dummy book, which means kind of like the first draft for planting a rainbow. If you read that book. When a squirrel slipped into my house, a book idea walked right up to me. So that's, I think, there, there he goes, up the bricks on his claws. He steals seeds and eats with his paws. So that's a page from a book she wrote about the squirrel. On a trip to the aquarium, I, while I watched colorful fish swim by, a book idea swam into my brain, and I sketched and I made notes before I floated away. And these are the list of fishy words for fish eyes. Jumping, beautiful, smiling, wet, wiggly, fan-tailed, skinny, darting, scaly, finny, splashy, flipping, gliding, short, slender, and a whole more list. And there's... She used an uh, old snap top container and she hung fish from the inside. Hey. 
I keep my eyes open, an idea may be close by. And these are ice fishing decoys that she collects. She has lots of collections that she gets her ideas from. Once when I visited my sister, her cat brushed by my ankle and as he escaped out the door, a new idea. And this is art from Feathers for Lunch, which is one of my favorites, all the birds. And then she wrote, first I wrote the story from the cat's viewpoint. It went something like this. Doors let open, just a crack. Going out, might not be back. Food in a can is not too exciting when there are things I'd rather be biting. And then I wrote the story from the cat owner's viewpoint, and that's how it changed. Uh-oh, doors left open, just a crack. My cat is out and he won't come back. His food in a can is tame and mild. He's gone out for something wild. And it says, red-winged blackbird carved by my brother. So this is a wooden one. And that is actually my favorite kind of bird. After writing a story, I sketched the whole book, figuring out what to illustrate on each page. And she's even planning the colors on the bird, every single page in the story, you can see. Back and forth, I work on the pictures and the words until together they tell the story. So here's her sketch, her design for the page. And then that's what the page actually looked like. An oriole, a northern oriole, and a lilac bush. This is one of her most famous books that she illustrated. It's a sketch for Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. And it says, my art technique is called collage. I wonder if you remember what that is. I cut out scraps like pictures of a puzzle that I assemble, meaning put together, and glue into place. So this is all her planning from Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. And I didn't know until I read this book that the polka dots from that cover are hole punch holes. And this is art from Oodles of Animals. And it says, I'm messy when I work. Here's some more sketches. My waste baskets overflow. So you can see the design and then the shape. Scraps lie strewn all over the studio and more scraps stick to the bottoms of my shoes. But when ideas are flowing, I keep working. And these are all her collecting or collections from her cuckoo book, a Mexican folk tale, and a bird puppet based on art from the book. And it says, I often combine real objects with painted ones. So then she's writing, this is a bird tree from red leaf, yellow leaf. She put a photo of that actual bird treat into her story. And it says, make a, your own bird treat. Use a cookie cutter to cut a heart shape out of a slice of bread. Poke a hole in the top with a pencil or crayon. Brush an egg white onto the bread and press bird seed on and top. Let it dry and then thread a piece of ribbon or yarn through the hole and hang it on a tree. It says, I hung food on my tree for the birds to eat. And then it says, I use odd tools to create texture. That's another great word, the feeling or look up of something. I splatter paint with a toothbrush or I rub a crayon over my cheese grater. And that's how she created some different fun textures.
Sometimes I photograph folk art from my collection to illustrate a story. So folk art is art that is made by all sorts of people from all over the world. You can see some of the examples here. And this is even fruit from Mexico. I use what's close at hand. So she's got bottle cap, candy wrapper, a raisin, a pine cone, a toy fish, a pencil, a cinnamon stick, Mexican scrub brush, button, seashell, strawberry, toy compass, evergreen branch, toy wheel, all these things. So she used what's closest hand, close at hand just as I did when I was growing up. You can see all sorts of things in her snowman that she used. Sometimes I go for a walk looking for good stuff. Crab apples from a tree near the grocery store that I used as the cat's nose and boo to you. So there's the cat's nose that she used with that picture. And it says, black locust sea pods found in the park that I used as mouse tails. So there's the mouse tails. So she used lots of different things that she finds. And she made a little mask. So you can make a collage mask too. And it says, Mother Nature gives me free art supplies. So this is from her book, Leaf Man. So this was found near the White House. This is a special leaf sent to me from San Francisco, California by my editor, Alan, found near her home in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, picked up in my sister's backyard in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin, and sent by L Lisa from Billings, New York. She used all of those different leaves in her project, her book about Leaf Man. Day after day, I work until the art looks just right for me. All different pictures and drawings of plants, probably from her garden. You might ask why I chose to be an artist. Here's some more examples of her art. And she says, I think maybe it's the other way around. Art chose me. And there's a picture of her. It says, photo by my brother Dick. And that's a picture of her, Lois Ellert. She's holding some mice. I bet she made those out of scraps of fabric. And all these caterpillars are art from 10 little caterpillars. And it says, if you feel that way too, I hope you'll find a spot to work and begin. Begin your art. And this one says, this photograph, which I used as reference for the hen in 10 little caterpillars was taken years ago at the Wisconsin Fair. So she used the photo of that, that guy, which she used to paint that and cut and glue all those feathers on for her 10 Little Caterpillars book. And it says, I wish you a colorful life. The end. So I hope you enjoyed this book and learned a little bit more about the artist Lois Elhart who has written and illustrated many storybooks. And you might have recognized some of them in this book today. So I hope you had fun, and I'll see you later.